Hi, my name is George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be making this color reference chart. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you're serious about learning Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training courses, and you'll find links for that in the description and also in the YouTube cards. Okay, let's get to it. Having a Photoshop Elements color chart like this is very useful to get the best quality out of your images. It helps you understand how colors shift depending upon how you're viewing them. Now, if you want a real good reference image for use for printing, I recommend that you print this out on the actual paper that you'd be using as your final output paper. If you want the closest imitation of this, or the closest rendition of this rather, you can print on a good photo paper. Now when I printed this out on photo paper, let me show you what happened on this one. I have kind of a representation over here of what that looks like. First off, across the top we have our RGB colors. These are nice bright RGB. Really good for monitor use. Down below we have our CMYK colors. These are both from the color swatches. Below that, of course, we have our grayscale, and then some sample pictures right down here. Now, the top stuff, this color chart across the top here, this is useful for seeing how your colors appear on the internet or on the web. But these will not print as bright as this on a regular printer. Most inkjet printers nowadays, or color laser printers, are using the CMYK method, and your colors will look more like this. Let me show you what mine kind of look like. Just bring this up here. They kind of come out like that. The yellow is still bright because there is a pure yellow ink, so I have a nice bright yellow. The red's not too bad, it's pretty close. Everything else is pretty well toned down. It's not exactly the same as the CMYK, but it is much darker than it is on a monitor. So that's how it looks on my final output print. The CMYK didn't change. This looks exactly like it looks on the print. This is a very good match for the printed colors. Now for our colors down here, we have white over here. You can't see it's on a white background, but there's a white color swatch there. And then 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, and pure black in here. On my printout, these two blend together. You can't see any difference between the black and the 90% gray. So there are some obvious differences. Now if you're looking at this in different monitors, if, if you put two different monitors side by side, or if you take a desktop monitor and a laptop, or a desktop and a tablet, or a desktop and a smartphone, chances are the images won't look exactly the same on any of those different devices. That's because screens are all just a little bit different. You can't get an exact match unless you calibrate all that stuff together so it is a perfect match, but you know that's never going to happen in the real world. Also, whenever you save this image out as something else, this is in the default Photoshop Elements format. If I save this out as a JPEG file, the colors are going to change because JPEG is a lossy format. It's going to compress the image that will compress the colors. Depending upon the JPEG setting, it'll be minimal or a lot. So you will lose some color quality there as well. So if I was using this on the internet as a web picture, it wouldn't look as good as it looks here. But this color chart will help you to understand how those shifts are, and you can then make adjustments as needed. Let's look at our photographs right down here. Left photograph first. This is how it looks on my printout. It's a lot more washed out. It's a bit more contrasty, and it's a lot lighter. So here it is on the screen and that's how the printout looks. So I know that it is going lighter this way, so I may need to take this darker to compensate for it going lighter on the printout. I had to kind of work back and forth. It's a bit hard to tell, but one way to do that is what I'm doing right here. I have an adjustment layer right here, little levels adjustment layer, and I changed my settings, did a printout, changed my settings in here, so that the image matches what it looks like on the printout. I then know that it's moved, the lightness is moved to the left by about 1.04. So I was struck off by trying moving this to the right 
by 1.04, maybe just one, and do a printout and see what happens, see how close I get. So if your image is critical, you'll have to make that adjustment. Now if I print it out like this, it's going to come out even lighter than this on the print. You'll never get it to match your print exactly. All you can do is to understand by trying to mimic your print exactly how the color is shifting and then try to do an opposite shift from that so that your final printout is more like what you're trying to get in your original. Let's just hide that. And finally our color over here, you see it's just a little bit lighter. It actually printed out lighter on my printout like that than it did on the original. So I know if I wanted to have this color, it's going a little lighter. I would probably want to come in, put an adjustment layer above that and make this a little bit darker to compensate for the printer printing it a little bit lighter. So having this kind of chart allows you to do that kind of adjustments. All right, now we're past all this theory stuff. Let's go ahead and make one of these things. On the color chart, these will make here right from our color swatches. And then for the picture over here, just find some picture that you like that has good flesh tones in it. This is our flesh tone example. It doesn't need to be this picture or anything even like this as long as you have some flesh tones to use for your flesh tone example. Over here I like getting some kind of a picture that has a lot of colors in it. I've often used this kind of a picture or I may use a basket of fruit, things like that. They just have a lot of colors in there, so it's natural colors, but there's you know, a wide range just to see how things are shifting. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll close this down. There we go, I'll just save that, get rid of that. Now I have this picture and I also have this one up here inside the photo bin. We'll come back to those in just a bit. We'll start off with a brand new file. So file new blank file. I have mine set at standard US paper size, eight and a half by 11, resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Choose OK. And there we are. Now I need to put in some rulers and some guidelines to create our grid. I'll just zoom in on this. That's pretty good. And we'll start off with the top guides up here. And the first guide I'm going to be bringing in at about one and a quarter inch. These don't have to be exact, just you know, close is good enough. So I'll pull this in, pull it into about one and a quarter inches, right about there. And then we'll do seven of these lines across here, all one inch apart. So the next one is at about two and a quarter, which is right about there and three and a quarter again right about there these don't have to be exact i'll just do this quickly it's four and a quarter five and a quarter six and a quarter there we go and one more down here at seven and a quarter and then if you want to put a black square in let's do one more guide for our black square and that's at eight and a quarter right down there okay so far so good let's come down one inch so let's pull this down one inch so this is the top line for our top row of colors, our top swatches. We'll make these one inch squares. So I'll pull this down to the two inch mark right there. So there's our one inch squares. Let's now leave a half inch between these. So I'll pull a line down here to two and a half. There we are, so scroll down a little bit. Our next set comes in here. Again, one inch high, so I'll set this at three and a half. There we go. And then a half inch space, so let's set this one at four. And our final one at five. And now we have our guidelines, we can easily create our color swatches from this. One thing to check, go up to view, come down to snap to, and make sure that guides is selected. Snap to guides is checked. On the right hand side, let's make a new layer. There we go, I'm just going to name this one swatches. And let's make our swatches. To do this, we'll be using the color swatches right there. I'll just pull this up and just kind of set it right over here. On the swatches, the top row here, these are your RGB colors. Down here, these are your CMYK colors. In between, we have the top of our grayscale and the bottom of our grayscale. Now, if you want to, you can kind of you know adjust this, pull the side out maybe a little bit so they you know line up a bit better. It's up to you but I'll just leave that kind of where it was. That's pretty good. 
So to make our swatch, we'll keep them in this sequence. Go up to the rectangular marquee tool and then click right on this top corner here and drag to the bottom corner. Since we had snap to select it, it'll snap to those guides. Go to the paint bucket, click on the first color red and fill that in. There we are. Okay, just deselect that or control D and pull in our second one. Again, let it snap to those guidelines. Back to the pink bucket, yellow, and there we go. It's really this easy. So go ahead, just deselect. The reason I'm deselecting is so I can easily see where the next lineup is without having that dashed line in the way. Get back to our paint bucket and green. Deselect, continuing on across. And paint bucket again, go over here to our cyan right there and deselect, continuing on across. Let's go ahead and make our next selection right there. Back to the paint bucket, grab our blue. There we go. Deselect, and let's grab our final section. There we are, paint bucket, and that's the magenta, and there it is, and then deselect. Okay, that takes care of the RGB colors. Let's now come down to this one, skip that half inch, area coming out of the next realm down here, next little section. Let's select our first spot, back to the paint bucket, grab the CMYK red, there we go. Same exact thing, just using the CMYK colors this time instead of the RGB colors. And then just work clear through the color set, and we'll then have our matching CMYK color set under here underneath of the RGB color set. And again, this is how your colors will look. They'll look close to this when you do a printout on an RGB. It's going to depend upon the paper you use. It's going to depend upon you know, a lot of those, those things, the ink that's being used, that kind of stuff, the kind of printer you're using and so forth, whether it's more or less accurate. But this would be a pretty good estimate of how it's going to be looking. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this off with our last two down here. That's our CMYK blue, which always seems to have some purple to my eye mixed in with it. And then finally our CMYK magenta right there, and then deselect. Okay, let's do our grayscale. I'll just pull this down a bit. Grayscale goes down on this line right here. Now, Let's go ahead and put one in for the white. I'll just grab that and white and fill that with the paint bucket. Now, theoretically, your printer should print nothing if it's printing white. It assumes that this is going to be white paper, so it's going to be giving you transparency. It, it works with white the same as it would transparency. But just in case something kind of funny is happening here, we'll go ahead and do this. This will let you know if your printer is doing anything odd. If you have any kind of tint in here at all, then there's something wrong with the printer. Okay, let's go ahead now, deselect that, go to our next square here. Now this one is going to be 15% gray, or a paint bucket, and what is the setup over here? We have 10% and then 15% is right there. Fill that, and we'll do these in 15% steps. Back to our paint bucket, so that's 15, this one is 20, that's 25, there's 30. There we go. And continue on down. The next one we want is going to be 45. So that one's 30, 35, 40, this will be 45 right there. There we go. Fill that and deselect. And just continue on to fill in our set here. The next one we want is going to be 60. So that's 50, 55, and 60, which is right there. Continuing on, next is going to be 75. So grab our paint bucket. 65, 70, 75 right there. And then deselect our last of our gray scales here is 90. So that's 80, 85 and 90. There we go. And then for our last section in here, we want to put in a pure black at the right hand side. 
we have black right there and fill that in and then deselect. So there's our basic color scale, RGB on top, CMYK second, and a nice gray scale across the bottom. Let's now bring in our two pictures. I'm just going to close these swatches down and let's go to our photo bin. Bring our first picture up. I'll just drag this over like that. And there we go. And it's hiding in there someplace. Up at the top of the picture. Okay, let's get the other one first. There it is. Grab it in, drag it in, and there it goes. So they're both sitting at the top of the page. We can adjust those now by zooming out to fit on screen. And I'll grab the first one here. This is our color pencils right there. I'll bring it over here somewhere. And if you don't see any control handles, just use the Control T keyboard shortcut to bring your control handles up. Grab your corner and then just resize that to fit. There we go. And second picture, same thing. Let's drag it down into position. If you don't see control handles, then the Control T keyboard shortcut. Shrink that down to fit and choose OK. Let's now hide these guidelines. So view and you can clear them or just hide them. And there we go. There's our nice color chart that we can use for checking how different monitors work and also how our printout works. Let me just resize this a bit to fit so it looks good. And there we go. There's the, the whole thing. So there it is. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. But making a color chart like this very useful to allow you to at least visually understand how your colors are modifying depending upon how they're being used. If you're going for a JPEG output for web use or if you're printing it out on matte paper or you're printing it out on white paper or if you're even printing it out on color paper it's going to be changing your colors as well. And also if you are using your image on different devices like on a smartphone or a tablet or something else. So very useful tool to have as part of your standard reference tools. So there you go. That's how you can set up a color reference chart here inside of Photoshop Elements. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.